Well, Happy New Year. Welcome to the first World of Zwift for 2022, which is very exciting. If you're new here, I'm OJ Borge. I'll be your host here to guide you through the show. And we're certainly kicking off the new year in style because this is what we've got coming up this week. Wes Salman brings us the inside line on the best developments that we saw in 2021. We preview the upcoming season of the Zwift Racing League Premier and Community Divisions. Myself and a few friends, we set out our Zwifting goals for 2022. And finally, Shane Gaffney, he's back with the workout of the week. The new year is a perfect time to set some new goals. Whether it be riding or running, Zwifting or an IRL challenge, we love nothing more than you getting involved in the show. Please hit like, why not subscribe and then leave us a comment to let us know what goals you'll be chasing in 2022. Now, 2022 has so much in store here on Zwift from group rides, races, workouts and group workouts. So let's take a moment to check out the latest goings on in the world of Zwift. The Whoop Workout series kicks off on January the 3rd, the clever boffins over at Whoop who make these wearable wrist straps. Zwift has taken part in the Whoop Workout series. We'll have access to a range of workouts specific to triathlon running and cycling training. Additionally, these workouts will be added to the on-demand workout selection, allowing both Whoop users and non-Whoop users to select the workout they want to do based on how they feel. Pro racer Andre Greipel has called an end to an illustrious 17-year career that included over 150 victories, including 22 Grand Tour stage wins. To celebrate his epic career and to continue to support ALS, a charity that is close to his heart, you can join Andre as he leads a social ride on January the 15th and send the gorilla a goodbye message and also a ride on. You know where to find out more in the links below. And that is not all you can get up to on Zwift. There is so much to get involved in. There's the Zwift Duathlon League, there's the Zwift Running League, there's Fast Forward Wheels Race Series, and also, don't forget, what better way to start 2022 than joining the biggest party on wheels. Yes, of course I mean the Tour de Zwift. It is back, and it's better than ever. Here's Matt Stevens to tell you what this year's tour has in store. Welcome to the Tour de Zwift 2022, the giant tour of discovery. With eight stages taking in every Zwift world, there's no better way to explore everything that Zwift has to offer, all whilst doing so alongside thousands of fellow runners and riders. This year's tour will consist of four shorter stages, taking place on Mondays to Thursdays, with the longer rides saved for when you have a bit more time on your hands over the weekends. The eight routes go from pan flat to mountainous, city streets to muddy trails, punchy climbs, short reps and long loops all culminating with the final stage on the 2022 UCI Cycling Esports World Championship course. There really is something for everybody in this year's Tour de Zwift. And if that wasn't enough, there's no shortage of special kit unlocks. Plus, you could find yourself running or riding alongside some very special guests. Before the tour rolls out, you can test your legs in warm-up rides and runs from January the 3rd. To be a part of the biggest party on wheels, head to Zwift.com forward slash TDZ and sign up. Or hit the link in the Zwift companion app where you too can book your ticket for the giant tour of discovery. Time now in the world of Zwift for the inside line. Excitingly, we haven't spoken to him for a while. It's time to chat to Zwift's lead game designer. That is Wes Salman. Wes, how are you, buddy? It's a new year. It's 2022. I'm doing great, OJ, how are you doing? Well, excited to chat to you because 2021 was busy for you. And if I was gonna ask you the question, what was the most exciting thing that you did in 2021 within Zwift, what would it be? That's, that's a hard question to answer. There was a lot of cool stuff we did uh, last year. So returning to home was one of the big things that I love to get out for our users because it's been one of the most requested features we've had for years. So fixing that and making that experience better has been a top priority and it's great to get it out there. But we did a lot of cool stuff with routes, route information, route completion data in your route selection UI, a lot of ways to make badge hunting more fun. Uh, that's been a really great boost as well for users who are looking for fun stuff to do in Zwift and exploring around Watopia and the other worlds. And one of the other things that we talked a lot about last year was Pack Dynamics. And I'm right in saying that it's Pack Dynamics 3.0, that's where we are? That's where we are, that's the internal versioning number. Uh, most Swifters don't care about that number, but that's, that's the version we're on internally. So for people who maybe didn't realize that Pack Dynamics was released, that it became a new thing, what would they have noticed in game when they were riding around? 
hopefully they would have noticed that Zwift felt smoother. Uh, for their riding experience in a pack, even a small pack, they would have noticed less movement of a rider that didn't feel natural in front of them or behind them. They would have noticed that their own rider uh, was more consistent in the lines they chose and more predictable in how they behaved around other riders. So the goal always has been to create an experience in Zwift that mimics outdoor riding. And if you've ever ridden in a group of five or 10 people or even you know 50 or 60 people, you seem to be connected without actually talking to each other in regards to how a group is gonna take a corner. And we wanted Zwift to feel that way. So you had that trust that when you go left, everybody's gonna go left with you, that school of fish feel, so that you actually felt like you were immersed in the world as opposed to being distracted by a weird zigzagging of a rider in front of you or a weird line that your own rider was taking. For you then, as, as a game designer, does that give you more satisfaction when you sort out those things which might look like nuts and bolts but really just improves people's experience? It, it really does, and it's funny because the return to home feature has been one of the ones that bothered me before I even worked at Zwift. It's been around that long because having to restart the game to select a new world isn't fun. And depending on the speed of the machine you're on can take time that you don't really want to spend looking at a loading screen. So adding those kind of features may seem simple uh, in regards to the experience, but they really add a lot of value for how people use the program. I've just got this wonderful image of you then, Wes, when as soon as you, you press upload and the, and the new game update goes out and the return to home's working, if you're just leaning back, hands behind the head and giving a big old sigh of, of achievement, does that happen? No, not at all. Uh, <laughs> we press the big red button and then we watch. We watch the forums, we watch our own internal telemetry to find out exactly how people are downloading and logging in with the new version to make sure that there's no issues. And it's a constant live operations program. There's multiple people looking at lots of different telemetry, lots of different information coming in from our users so that we can react if there's a problem that, that we didn't find in testing. Gotcha, so it's actually quite stressful then. It can be, yeah. Now, one of the things that came in in 2021 was Pace Partners. Was there a direct inspiration from the early, the early Blue Ghost that we saw in Zwift? Yeah, the Blue Ghosts are a throwback to original Zwift days when there were not a lot of people in the platform. So there would be days you would log in and there would be maybe 80 people in Watopia. And uh, for riders who were looking for others to ride with, that was sometimes hard if they chose a route that wasn't very popular. So the Blue Ghosts really allowed you to have other riders to ride with. They weren't very predictable because they were just kind of random. Uh, they didn't really follow along with anything you cared about. They were just doing their own thing uh, and they kind of filled some space for you to ride around with. Whereas with Pace Partners, we really upped our game with how these automated systems can create an experience that is really important for users as opposed to simply being filler. So the Pace Partners, they kind of did evolve from the Blue Ghosts. But in reality, Pace Partners were built more to be a perpetual group ride as opposed to just ghost riding around the world. Uh, if we talk about big, exciting things that happened last year, towards the end of the year, it was the release of Mercury Islands. What's been the reaction to it? Well, it's been great. Uh, and with the most recent expansion, Mercury Islands, with being Neokio, uh, we really stepped out of our normal map development process and what we delivered and had something that people um, are really excited about with Neokio. So Mercury Islands, we've learned a lot around uh, dirt roads, narrow roadways, uh, building things that people um, can recognize that are real world references but are not real world locations. Uh, we've learned a lot around how we can take these different worlds and create these expansion maps within these worlds to create anticipation for what's cool and coming up next uh, and also being able to deliver them. We've delivered the core map as well as the expansion all within a short period of time which is somewhat new for us. There's times where we've spent years on an individual map like New York for instance took a long time for us to, to finally deliver uh, partly because it was a very complex map for us to build but also because there were things that happened uh, in the business where we needed to, to shift focus on other aspects of what we wanted to deliver. So New York took a long time so it was really nice to see Mercury Islands and the expansion of Mercury Islands come out so quickly. Uh, and I assume that everything else is being kept under wraps then Wes for 2022? Yeah, very much so. We've got a lot planned, but it's all under wraps. Well, as soon as it's announceable and you're ready to tell us, please do let us know in the world of Zwift. And until then, Wes, it has been a pleasure. Have a great year. Thanks, OJ. As 2021 is now in our rearview mirror, goodbye 2021. There is so much to look forward to in 2022. So now is the perfect time for goal setting. Personally, I benefited so much from training on Zwift ahead of Mallorca 312, and I'm chomping to take that form onto another epic endurance challenge. Speaking of Mallorca, whilst I was there, I set a time on the iconic Sacalobra climb. And with the help of another structured Zwift training plan, I'll be gunning to beat that time in the coming months. Now, 
No doubt you'll have your own goals, but here are a few of my friends with their 2022 targets. What's up, Zwifters? This is Ashton Lambie here to talk about my 2022 plans. Just finished up Saturday, Oh My Crit, with my team Next Esports. And uh, that's gonna be a big plan for 2022 is to get back into the community league, hit some races and kind of use that for training. I'm doing the Lifetime Grand Prix this year. So a lot of gravel, a lot of adventure and uh, Zwift's gonna be a big part of training for that. So make sure you grab a towel and hope to see you on there. Cheers. Next year, my goals will be first and foremost to defend my esports world title, um, to win an Ardennes Classic, uh, preferably Flesh Wallon, um, but I wouldn't complain if it was Amstel or Liège. Um, and then the Tour de France Femme avec Zwift is a major goal for me next year, um, so that's really exciting. Hello everyone, Erica L here, and my 2022 goals for Zwift is to make Zwift part of my weekly training along with my road training. See, in sunny South Florida, we are always outside, but Zwift is very beneficial because we have no climbing here and I can get climbing in on Zwift. So to make this happen, I have to first remove some roadblocks. And first, I want to get a dedicated bike for my Zwifting. And then two, I want to create a weekly ride with my friends so I can get that accountability accountability <laughs> accountability I need every single week to make sure Zwift is part of my training. Hi everyone, it's Kristen Armstrong here and my goal in 2022 is to do an outdoor gravel event. I'll be using the Zwift platform in order to keep myself accountable. I'm all about quality over quantity style of workouts. I'll be doing structured workouts on Zwift to help me prepare for my outdoor event. I'll see you in 2022. Right on. Hello everybody, just riding on Zwift in Yorkshire today and um, just looking ahead to my personal goals um, which I think will be a good idea to include in your goals in 2022 is alongside all of your desire to improve your performance, get better, get fitter, be more happier, for me always remind yourself of why you love riding a bike in the first instance whether that's on Zwift, riding with your mates or doing the same thing out to a cafe in real life. Just remind yourself that cycling is a lot of fun, it makes you feel good, so never ever lose sight of the importance of enjoying yourself on your bike, whether it's indoors or outside. Hi, Kristen here, and my goals for 2022 would have to be winning the world championships that are coming up in February. Um, that would be the number one goal, I, I feel like <laughs> the obvious goal. Um, pedal to the metal, full gas, all in. <laughs> um, other than that, I always enjoy um, improving my times up the Alp uh, and also bent top. Um, just continue getting some really big numbers and, and power to weight for the 20 minutes. My goals for 2022 are to get back uh, to top level of gravel racing by using uh, Zwift as a bit of motivation. I want to try to get my level 50 uh, this year, but most importantly, I want to kick OJ's ass in a couple races. My goal on the bike and on the turbo for 2022 is quite simple, and that is to continue cycling for as long as possible through pregnancy. I'm about five months at the moment, rapidly growing, and I can keep my hands on the drops and the tops on the turbo trainer at the moment but i might have to customize that position as i go i'll keep you posted and that's my goal nice and simple hello world of zwift i'm ben foster the cycling gk now i have got two goals for 2022 the first is to graduate to a cat b racer i want to be competing and winning regularly in the cat b scene and my second goal for 2022 is to get up that horrible out de Zwift in under an hour. Now I am 92 kilograms, so it would mean going up in about 300 watts average. It's gonna burn, it's gonna sting, but you know what? I'm gonna do it. It's as simple as that. Happy 2022, everybody. So now you've seen that, what are your goals for 2022? Maybe you're riding your first Fondo, an Everesting attempt maybe, or simply to Zwift more than you did last year. As always, I would love to know, and you can tell me 
in the comments below. Now, after a brief break for the festive season, the Zwift Racing League is back, baby, and who better to give us their thoughts and predictions for both the Premier and Community Divisions than Nathan Guerra and Dave Toll. As Dave would say, and I'm going to do it in his voice, <clears throat> It's on like Donkey Kong! Thanks, OJ. I love it. Love your energy. So, hey, there's a lot of energy heading into the new season, that's for sure. And uh, who better to ask about the first race, Nathan, as we kick things off heading to Neokyo? I know you're excited about this course. Yeah, this is, in my opinion, one of the best courses on this new Neokyo city that's been launched in McCurry Islands. Lap distance, 24.25 kilometers you got 167 meters of elevation the yokyo all nighter it's got a pretty significant climb right in the middle of it and it's about 1.88 kilometers long so dave that's a pretty long climb for what a lot of people have thought is mainly a flat and crit course type city you actually have this tower right in the middle of it that you got to take on so I have a feeling that this is going to put a little bit more sting in the legs that we've seen in past seasons and kind of a nice opener for those who like to go uphill a little bit more. We've really seen with the women aggressive racing, it's starting to pay off more and more. Fortune favors the brave and riders like Kristen Kolchinski at 2024 are, are showing a different style of racing that we saw last season. Looking forward to more of that in this course. What Ashley Moolman Pasier was doing with that Roca Corva team that we're looking forward to seeing in Premier League, uh, it's fantastic. Nathan, it really will answer a lot of questions about uh, who will be the most dynamic races out there. Who comes to mind for you? Yeah, I mean, you know, out of the Community League, we're definitely going to be watching out for those that are going to challenge the racers that you were just talking about. You know, Zoe Langham's going to be a rider uh, coming from that Wahula Cole team. We're also going to be talking, obviously, about the world champion, Ashley Moomin Pasio. We're going to be talking about Courtney Webb. You know, and then, obviously, there's the Hino riders. Also, though, watch out over on Canyon Esports, Caroline Williams, that pickup from last season, she's always in the conversation when it does go uphill. McCurry Islands has a ton of climbing on it. Something I think that these riders who have a higher watt per kilogram for these longer durations rather than just a short punch are going to be very excited about in this season. On the men's side of things now, BZR Sports Solid. I'm watching for them to up their game. They left last season on a high note with the win by Mateus DeRus. Uh, this is the team of Leonard Tugels. Do they have the depth to really challenge uh, next here as next won every race of the season? in the previous 2021-22 uh, season we just wrapped up. You know, when it comes to the courses that we're looking at in this next season, the riders coming out of the community teams may be going to have a little bit more of a chance against these high-powered sprinter teams that we have out on the uh, Premier Division already. Team Arrow has shown that they can absolutely dominate climbs uh, watch out for these teams, I think. And then also there's a couple of other teams, I would think, again, BZR Solid Sport, as well as Canyon Esports. Another team, Dave, we have not talked about, and these courses, I think, is going to be, they're going to be smiling ear to ear right now. Sara Snowpins. You know, that team, I think, with Ryan Larson, Gavin Dempster, uh, you know, there's just a reality of, of who is on that team that I think they've been kind of frustrated, actually. I think that Saris they're going to be a team to watch out for because of the nature of these courses that they now feel they have the opportunity to maybe get some wins and dominate later in this season as we get into some climbing courses. Well, Nate, then a lot of riders are going to go immediately from the final race of the ZRL directly into the World Championships. Let's talk about making that uh, transition as the final race of the year. Will it be good prep for Worlds, Nathan? Climbers Gambit, it doesn't get much better than that. And well, there's a reality that it, it, there's, there's Climber's Gambit goes all the way to the top of the uh, Watopia Mountain reverse KOM, actually, as the finish. And that is going to definitely be an amazing prep, getting ready to see who is going to be able to take on the nonstop climbing that is out on that Knickerbocker course. It's going to be a great look as to who's going to be able to perform because a ton of these riders that are in this Premier Division are going to be representing their countries for a world champion jersey. We're also going to have the current world champion participating. And some of these Premier Division riders who have been coming up out of the community are going to be very hungry to get that preview out on Climber's Gambit and then take it to the course out on Knickerbocker. OJ, 
It's on like Donkey Kong. This week's workout of the week is CA. CA stands for cadence adjustment. And it's exactly what this week's workout is targeting. We all have our preferred cadence range, but it's important to be able to pedal outside of that when riding outdoors over variable terrain. This workout challenges your ability to spin the pedals at different speeds, and ideally, to do so outside of your typical comfort zone. If you enjoy this workout, check out the Build Me Up Flexible Training Plan for more like it under the Plans tab. Next week's workout of the week is VO2 Max Tabata Style. For the uninitiated, Tabata training is a short burst at high intensity with an even shorter rest right after. Tabata intervals are shown to improve both aerobic and anaerobic strength due to their intensity. We're going to be using this micro interval approach and more specifically, 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off, like in Tabata's study, to reap maximum training benefits in a short period of time. Well, that's it. The first show of 2022 is done and dusted. What a way to kick off the new year. I hope this has inspired you to get riding, to get running, and to get after those 2022 goals. Until next time, I bid you a fond farewell, and as ever, ride on. Thank you.